Yeah, so Merlin goes to this giant flowers to mix Santa's child roofies together. And by the way, this actor showed up on stage, put a gun to his own fucking head and said, there will be 11 minutes of my silly walk in this movie. <laughs> Right, and I will do my own underscoring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll have a wacky soundtrack. We can't afford a wacky soundtrack. I will have a wacky soundtrack. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because Dan Carlin already had dibs on quadrennial history shows. I'm your host, No Illusions, and unfortunately, Heath has chosen to further fuel the rumor that he's actually just a voice that Eli does when he doesn't have a cold by not being here today. But sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Buenos dias, Noah. I am... Coming to you from my space palace, which okay. everyone knows I live in, and have my army of slave children, just like <laughs> everyone experiences on the regular. I just want to end the, like, I want to switch out to a different episode now, like a different movie, and just leave that intro in there. Use another show's opening, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and also joining us today is friend of the show and returning guest masochist, Rebecca Vigil. Rebecca, welcome back. Hi guys. <laughs> you should just do that in the background during the entire show. Um, yeah, I mean, he did it in the movie. Oh so. my god. Yeah, definitely. I best worst cackling laughter was real close on mine, but I uh, didn't quite I've, make the I've cut. never sympathized with the iTunes reviews that say we laugh at ourselves too much until this episode. <laughs> All right, so let's give all of this some context. Tell us, Rebecca, what will we be breaking down today? We will be breaking down Santa Claus, and, and that's not to be confused with the Tim Allen masterwork, uh. The Santa Claus. No, it's <laughs> Santa Claus, which is also known, and I quote from Wikipedia, as Santa Claus versus the Devil, <laughs> a 1959 Mexican fantasy film. Indeed. Okay, so... <laughs> Just to give, like, this is one of the truly great bad movies of all fucking time and is almost yeah. universally recognized as such. I've been looking forward to doing this since we started the, uh, since we started God Awful Movies. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited. It did not disappoint, but really it's not my job to answer that. That's Eli. So Eli, tell us, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love Christmas, but... Whoa, the acid just hit and you really need Steve to stop making that face. <laughs> you will taste this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well said, sir. Um, all right. So is I, I already hinted at one possibility that didn't quite make the list. But is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? The best worst editor <laughs> oh, i know not this a frame is about, was spared yeah, i know I, I know this is about santa claus but the editor needed to trim the fat oh, <laughs> like this would have been great at a nice tight 22 what we should have exactly. been shooting for here is a tight a tight 22 bro all right so i was this is a big one here i was gonna go with best worst earth okay <laughs> Like several times in this movie, we're going to see Earth from a distance. That pathetic piece of shit Earth leaves you longing for the astronomical integrity of the Jetsons opening. OK, <laughs> yes, I was going to go with best worst shenanigans. So uh, major spoilers, 99 percent of this movie or an hour and 45 minutes of this movie is Santa and Satan pranking each other back and forth. And the writers of this movie wrote, I'm going to say one shenanigan. And then everything else was improvised based on like, I don't know. I light him on fire. I shoot him in the face with a gun. The hell with it. Can we get a suggestion, please? <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. We all just watched a Mexican film. And of course, that means that. There are ICE agents at our door asking for paper, so we're going to have to pause for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the unabashed insanity of Santa Claus. Uh, how about this? 
clothing one. Yeah, but then there's no bar stuff. No, that's true. Hey, Noah. Hey, Eli. What you guys talking about? Oh, hey, Cecil. Weird that you just showed up in a god-awful movie set. Yeah. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what to get Heath for Christmas. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's... He's smart and fashionable, but he also has varied interests, so he's impossible to shop for. And, and funny. Super funny. Yeah, I can't forget funny. And smart. Smart. Uh, okay. Well, why, why don't you try a box of awesome from Bespoke Post? What's a box of awesome? Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. So whether you're looking to craft your own hard cider or toast perfectly aged fall cocktails, Box of Awesome has you covered from style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. You see? Oh, wow. Look at this. Stash comes with a beautiful veg leather wallet, super cool key holder, and a little portable duct tape thing. That's cool. That's awesome. And, and, and the parlor box contains a three-piece decanter set and an awesome wooden tray to keep it on. He'd love that. He would. And the best part is that the Box of Awesome combines all their great stuff into one subscription. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They'll release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. Each box only costs 45 bucks, but it has over $70 worth of gear inside. All that for almost half off, huh? Well, it gets better. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code AWFUL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Enter AWFUL for 20% off your first box. Oh, man. I think I know what I'm getting. Heath, because he likes so many different things. And all of them are awesome, just like him. Guys, did Heath write this ad? I don't see why that matters. It's a good ad. (laughs) It's a good advertisement for a product. I'm here, too. Man, this script writing thing is hard, huh? Tell me about it. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Let's. Uh, why don't we shake off the cobwebs and do something fun? Shots! It is 2 p.m. You suggest that a lot. I won't apologize for having fun. Okay, okay. Um, how about Mad Libs, huh? We Mad Libs the plot. See what happens. Sure, okay. So we're not even going to consider shots. Okay, so uh, Santa, who lives in space, (laughs) Space. uses Merlin (laughs) to defeat (laughs) Satan. Ah, That's pretty funny. Yeah, you know, (laughs) this this could be the movie. It 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 could. I mean, we haven't had any ideas, so yeah, yeah, it could. Guys. Be serious. This is a Christmas movie. We can't have, you know. Okay, if we finish early, we can go get shots. I love it. It's still only 2.30. You were outvoted, Steve. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on credits for C-level readers. Just took a minute <laughs> and gave me motion sickness as well. <laughs> My very first note is, let me save you both some time. This is an English dub of a Mexican film. And I appreciate that note, sir. I appreciate that <laughs> note right up front. Also, other fun fact, Gay K. Gordon Murray, the director and producer, didn't give this a general release. Instead, he just traveled around the country showing this at matinees. Can't imagine why this didn't get a general release. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we're going to open up the movie by meeting Santa, who lives up in his, obviously, as we all know, his cloud castle. (laughs) Ah, yes. Zero seconds into the movie before the language burial will show us that the myth of Santa Claus didn't quite make it to Mexico intact. (laughs) No. Santa lives in space? (laughs) Yeah, apparently. And not only does he live in a cloud castle, but they show the shot. He lives in a neighborhood of cloud castles. They never address the (laughs) other cloud castles there, right? It's just like you look at it as like visiting people in California. Like, why spend the money on a cloud castle if there's going to be another cloud castle right on top of it? (laughs) <laughs> oh, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, now I re- tooth fairies in another cloud castle having loud parties. Yeah, right. <laughs> goes into rehab. The place is empty. Gets squatters. <laughs> I love to the narrator as we're closing in on this cloud castle says 
Santa lives up in the clouds in a golden palace. I'm like, but we can, it's white. We can see that it's not golden. <laughs> this is in color. <laughs> uh, and this is where we get the first of what will be the majority of this movie, which is Santa laughing to himself oh. over it nothing. It is terrifying. Yeah, no, because it's a full blown cackle. There's no ho 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 uh, in this Santa. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 it's, it's like the hard. door at a haunted house. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, luckily, our listeners get a little inside knowledge here that's not even on the trivia of the IMDb page. According to the movie, the 50 worst movies of all time, and it's according book, the reason that he is constantly laughing is that the actor who played Santa sort of mumbled to himself in Spanish in ways that didn't make a lot of sense in the translation. And since K. Gordon Murray didn't want to translate all of that Spanish, he just told the English dub actor to laugh <laughs> over all of the like quick Spanish dialogue. So Are every you time, serious? Yeah. So all of that is Santa like mumbling to himself and being like, do do do, I'm Santa. I'll put some gifts here. I'll put some gifts there. And K. Gordon Murray was like, boo, boring. We'll just get to the plot points and replace it all with ha 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 ha. Oh, Amazing. My God. Amazing. So, again, as you go through this movie, just remember, every time Santa's laughing, it's because a white guy didn't want to translate too much Spanish. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So he cackles around his uh, nativity scene for a little while. And then he says to the nativity scene, he says, if you'll excuse me, I have to go finish the toys, which he does by playing an organ that electrifies the slave children. I yeah. Is the only answer i have yeah okay so we, we're now gonna check in with santa's sweatshop the next i don't know <laughs> 73 minutes of this movie <laughs> will involve a parade of cultural sensitivity as we you know tick off the children by one like by racial stereotype i guess yeah but but credit where credit's due the understanding of geography in this movie is fuh Nominal, right? <laughs> South America is divided up into 17 different countries. Africa is all one thing. And so is Central America. The, the orientation is mind blowing here. Well, we get, yes. we get at one point the Orient. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. speaking of orientation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Which this is supposed to be like, it's a small world after all, right? Right. Yeah. Except the thing about it's a small world after all is that they were all singing the same song yeah. <laughs> in different languages in traditional dress. And Kay Gordon, whoever his name was, who made this movie, was like, I'm not translating that many fucking things into this uh, Happy Santa Day. So he just has them. He has each group of whatever country or race they're representing singing a random song. So yep. the, the English kids are singing London Bridge is Falling Down. The American kids are singing like a cowboy song. Mary, they're singing Mary, Mary Had a Little, little lamb. lamb. Yeah. Yeah. There's no rhyme or reason to any of it. It's the lazy. It's a, it's like the first draft. Like yeah. Walt Disney was half drunk, sort of stumbling around the lazy river going, and then, you know, we'll put some Mexicans there, some Chinese is there, and then orient there and then africa there and then also, guatemala if i recall it's a small world after all everyone is happy to be there <laughs> <laughs> and this is not the case no These, no like children seem like prisoners from the jump like yeah. they seem miserable <laughs> yeah. yeah and again this goes on for 600 years so here's the list very quickly yeah we get and each of these groups gets a song Right. Yes. So we get African kids, Spanish kids who are churning butter in some very suggestive ways. It's not comfortable. <laughs> Chinese kids, British kids, Japanese kids, the Orient, Russian kids, French kids, German kids, Italian kids. Wait, I have to keep scrolling. Caribbean kids, South American kids, Brazilian kids, Central American kids, and then <laughs> American kids, and finally <laughs> Mexican kids. Yeah, which again, if you don't know that this movie is made in Mexico, is very confusing after we covered South and Central America <laughs> that Mexico gets its own <laughs> finale piece, which is twice as long as everyone else's. I'm, I'm yes. curious to know, Eli, do you think that Mexico is part of either South or Central America, and if so, which? 
You know that I do. <laughs> Everyone listening to this podcast, as I said that, was like, oh, he thinks that's part of those two. That's ten. It's all the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Latin America, South America, what's the fucking difference? I guess. <laughs> but yeah, no, and, and like, and there's a point in my notes, by the way, where I'm like, this entire movie is just going to be different because we're going to go through all like 197 whatever UN countries and, and have a group of kids <laughs> sing, aren't we? And I have only two notes on this that we didn't already cover. The first is the Caribbean kids. Part of their outfits is guns. <laughs> and that was very yep. um, a lot of kids. Actually. A lot of kids. Got yeah, the American anyone. kids have guns, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second thing is that this is intercut between the different countries and races with Santa just making love on yes. that organ. <laughs> no, no. Stevie Wonder would tell Santa to tone it down. Yeah, but it's interesting because his back is to them. He's yeah. like facing the racist piano computer and... <laughs> He is like hard. It's like wild. Yes. Yeah, no, this is definitely how Santa gets his rocks off. Okay. So then, all right, he's cackling away at the organ. And then a couple of kids come in and they're like, hey, Santa, do you like our little devil toy? <laughs> Which it seems like. Seems like Castro's about to light up a cigar on this one, right? Because they're like, no, you have to light it on fire and fire, light the wick, Santa. This will go great for you. Yeah, well, and this is not helped by the, the child actors. Obviously, there was an incident in a take that we didn't see because they hand Santa this firecracker devil toy and then they fucking book it out of frame. They're oh, like, yeah, like they're trying to beat a feral cat or something. Yeah. Please yeah. don't hit me. Please don't hit me. <laughs> yeah. So he lights up this little devil toy. It starts spinning around. And then we cut to a flash mob in hell. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I just have to say for the rest of this podcast, my notes are kind of sparse because that is how good, bad this movie is. <laughs> is I would find myself just like engrossed in how horrible yes, it yes. is. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Fuck, I didn't write any jokes. Down. <laughs> just standing there with jaw gape. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I'm with exactly. you. Again, fun fact from the movie and the novel that we probably wouldn't otherwise know. Pitch is part of a dance troupe and is a relatively famous clown in 1959. So you have to remember that this is like if a famous stand-up comedian was playing the devil and was doing all his bits in the middle of the movie, which of course... <laughs> Did not translate to American audiences, which is why there's so much time with Pitch doing just like physical comedy on his own to the stony silence <laughs> of the American dubbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So Satan tells Pitch, who is, I guess, his top d demon, that he must go to Earth and defeat co Santa in single combat. Right. Yeah. And if he fails, he will force him to eat chocolate ice cream. And, and Pitch is like, no, not chocolate ice cream. And I wrote in my notes, ah, Pitch also suffers from lactose intolerance and IBS. I get it, Pitch. I get it. Yeah, I, I found Pitch to be sympathetic in this movie. He was definitely the protagonist in my movie, in the movie too. I was watching. Because you know agree. what? He didn't carry around roofie powder for children. That's just yes. automatically puts you at the top of the list in my mind. Yes, and also the whole movie, I I could have sworn they were saying "bitch, <laughs> 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 bitch, don't go in there." <laughs> Gives a whole. Oh new my angle. god! If that narrator had just called him "bitch" throughout, it would have made so exactly. much sense. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So the devil rises to earth to do battle with Santa Claus is the plot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we see, like, and, and apparently that made the local news, right? That was that was the headline. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So Santa's cackling away at children that want toys, and the narrator cuts in. Now the narrator really doesn't seem to know his role, right? No. no. <laughs> he is part sports commentator, part narrator, part overly excited audience member. <laughs> but he's like, you know, here's a little good boy. Here's a good little boy whose daddy is quite rich. And I'm like, why are you 
Why are you sizing up daddy? <laughs> what are yeah. your goals here, man? He's going to compare this to the little girl in the moment, but there's way too long pause. He's just like, look at this good little boy. His parents invested well. 401k, nice apartment. Look at that business card. Yeah, that, damn that guy who got the promotion over me. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. He runs the advertising firm that your narrator just fucking works at. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, oh, this mother, on the ha other hand, is very poor, and her daughter just wants a fucking doll. And this is this is where we met, meet little Lupita. Little Lupita is fucking baby Yoda levels of cute, okay? Yeah. She's so adorable. Yes. However, her cuteness is offset by how fucking terrifying dolls were. In the year 1959. <laughs> yes. They are 75 feet long. Their eyes are made of the dead, rotten eyes of local foxes. <laughs> Their hair is the fire of Satan himself. These are the craziest looking toys I've ever seen. And look, I see old fashioned stuff and I'm like, ah, I get it. We knew what people looked like yeah. right in 1959. <laughs> That hasn't changed. <laughs> nope. Uh, this isn't ready yet. I'd say we're about 500 steps away from doll. But nope, she, she's just lusting after this hell figurine that the Blair Witch would have turned down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also, I cannot stress enough. Not a single child smiles in this no, movie. No, never. Not Lupita once. Lupita does never, never smiles no. in this movie. It's wild. She seems so sad. It makes me worried about on set practices because yeah. <laughs> all of the child actors seemed miserable. Yeah. Yeah. None of yeah. them seemed there to be there voluntarily. This is not a union contract. <laughs> no. It didn't go well. If no. you told me that this was Lupita number three and they'd lost the second during it, yeah. the fire dance, I'd be like, sure, <laughs> yeah. sure. Explain the it. performance. Yeah. I love this moment, too, because what we're watching, we're watching a bunch of kids like gathering at a window, looking at a Christmas display. And there's this creepy robot Santa cackling uh, in the uh, background uh, the whole time. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so uh, but then it, the narrator goes like we, a couple kids push their way to the front. And he goes, who are these kids? And I'm like, I don't know, man. You're the fucking narrator. <laughs> don't you ask me shit. <laughs> uh, but Satan looks at these kids and he thinks, ah, there's my boys. So he talks him into stoning robot Santa, which hurts real Santa. Yes. The physics of this world are really hard to work out. They're hard to work out. That said, I can go buy a fake Santa and find some petroleum jelly and fuck up Santa's Christmas this year. I'm just saying. They're like $11 at Walmart. I'm testing this out. Eli's got really weird lawn decorations for the holidays, <laughs> is what I'm saying. All right. So meanwhile, okay, so we're up in Santa's cloud castle. And boy, is he eager to give the devil a what for, right? Yep. Yep. And I guess th this is also where we meet Pedro, another adorable little Mexican kid um, mm -hmm. who's going to help Santa locate the little girl that fought off Santa's temptations using his incredibly terrifying magic telescope. Oh, is this the giant lips of horror that I'll never sleep again? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the the giant fleshlight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> there was I think we can all agree why Santa installed giant robot lips on his wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have a feeling this didn't start out as a telescope that Pedro just walked in and he was like, hey, what's this room, Santa? Telescope. He was like, oh, oh uh, it's a telescope. It's a telescope. <laughs> to tell it for looking around. The mouth is for telling me what it's found. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it wearing lipstick? Shut, shut up, Pedro. <laughs> Why don't you go down there and sing Mary Had a Little Lamb in Spanish some more? Stop asking so many fucking questions. Santa's yeah. going to turn his back to you for a second. <laughs> That's what he's mumbling in Spanish. <laughs> that's, that's why they overrode it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> yeah, but he has basically what we're supposed to learn from this scene is that he has surveillance equipment that would make Alexa blush. Yeah. <laughs> so and I love this is maybe my favorite thing that ever happened. I almost went with Best Worst Telescope, by the way. But this is where we get to meet my favorite character in the movie Earth. So Pedro goes, hey, Santa, I think I found her with the telescope. Santa looks through the telescope. Pedro has found Earth. So 
he narrowed it down to the nearest heavenly body. But <laughs> this earth, first of all, all the land masses are wrong and way too big. But secondly, and far more importantly, it's spinning the wrong way. <laughs> it's, it's it's spinning the wrong way, and it's not even close to the color, right? It's no, it's fifty nine. Yeah, it's all brown, all all one color. <laughs> Yeah, a fucking Earth looks different from Mexico, apparently. Yeah, that was that, that bothered the fuck out of me. I'm like, okay, we're setting up the the Muslim apocalypse, apparently. <laughs> okay. And also, each time, because spoiler, they use this sexual telescope more than once. Uh huh. And each time that they use the telescope, it's probably a. Uh, 10 minutes oh, yeah. like, to, yeah. to, for the little <laughs> eye to come out yep. and look. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, and we sit through that every single The kid has a every little time. incantation he has to do to wake <laughs> it up. We sit through that every time. Yeah. All right, so now, oh, we're speaking of how creepy the fucking dolls were in 1959 Mexico. Imagine what the goddamn puppets looked like. Because <laughs> <gasps> it's time for Lupita to watch a Gay porn Muppet Show. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, an yes. S and M gay porn Muppet yes. Show. I did write. Are these two puppets gonna fuck? <laughs> yes. It was not, but it wasn't an S. It was an S and S puppet show, right? Like, <laughs> they were mismatched, but yeah. And so they, she watches this terrifying nightmare pawn puppet show, and then as they're walking away, Lupita starts thinking about stealing a doll, and the narrator just about threatens to shoot himself in the face if she goes through with it. <laughs> again, so again, the, the narrator will constantly switch from like distant narration to yes. directly speaking to the character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So fucking weird. He's like, no, Lupita, don't do it. <laughs> and Satan shows up, right? And he's like, yeah, take that doll. See, you could have it. And I just want to point out, Satan makes some great points here. She's like, no, I will be good and not steal the doll. And Satan's like, uh, you don't have any fucking money. That's the way you're getting a doll. If you want a yeah. doll, that's how it happens. Yeah. <laughs> but she puts back the doll. Satan is duck noises level of mad. And I'm sure that's like that famous Mexican clown's shtick. He does the little duck noise thing or whatever. Makes no <laughs> fucking sense to me. <laughs> just suddenly he starts quacking. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now, now we go back to the Cloud Castle. Uh, Santa is celebrating Lupita's great accomplishment in not stealing the thing. And then Pedro has to zoom in the telescope on the other kids. This is the second time we're going to sit through the 10-minute telescope zooming in routine. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> Merely in consecutive scenes. But this time, the, the kids are looking at his sleeping, so they peek in on his dream. You can't yeah. even dream bad stuff. Yeah, right. That's, that's not fair. <laughs> thought crimes. Santa investigates thought crimes. The movie. God, yeah, no, right. Cancel culture has gone too far. <laughs> and I wrote in my notes, man, if that kid is old enough, he could get a super unpleasant surprise, Santa. You got to be careful yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, He's... it'll be his dream of him fucking a puppet of Santa. <laughs> yeah, right, right. He's like, wow, that kid's dreaming of having lips on his walls. Ah, uh, why don't you kids, why don't you guys all look at something else for a minute? All right, but now, okay, so we're checking in on that poor little rich kid's dream. So this is the first time, not the last, uh, that we're going to learn that, yes, that kid may have a lot of money, but his parents fucking hate him. <laughs> right? And all the yes. toys in the world can't substitute for parents that don't fucking hate you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Also, this is where we get my favorite character in the movie, uh, Japanese kid, who uh, is actually speaking Japanese, but the guy who translated this into English could not find a Japanese speaker. So he just <laughs> translated everyone else's lines. And the and Japanese, the Japanese <laughs> oh God, is that why? <laughs> Doesn't get a dub, so he's just like, hey, something in Japanese, and Santa's like, yep, you said it, whatever. A dream yeah. is a wish the heart makes. The whole time Santa Claus is doing the C-3PO form of translation, everybody's speaking different <laughs> languages to him, and he's speaking English back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so we check in on the, the kid dreams of getting two big presents that have his mom and his dad in it, and they love him in the dream. It's fucking sad. But it's not terrifying. For that, we'll have to check in on Lupita's dream. Yes. So 
Wait, before we actually look at the dream, we watch her asleep, you know, and she, she's laying on the bed. Dad gets up and puts his coat on top of her because she looks cold. And I'm like, she has a blanket. She's sleeping on top of it right now. You can keep your fucking coat. I mean, I get the gesture <laughs> or whatever, but just tug the blanket up over. That's why you have it. He lays it on a puddle next to her bed. There. <laughs> there we go. Gesture. And what's amazing about that moment is you can see the actor being like, there's a blanket. <laughs> it's, it's not what this gesture is for. Uh, uh, I, are you sure? I, I could just use the blanket. If it, no, okay, okay. All Don't right. hit me. <laughs> And then, so she, yeah, she's laying there being all poor and everything. And then the devil shows up and starts blowing on her like she was hot soup, <laughs> which is uncomfortable. Very, very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. So, but apparently that's how Satan makes you have uh, Satan dreams. So we watch the nightmare I will have until I die. <laughs> <laughs> Lupita's nightmare and yours. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Right. So okay, she's in a room that's filled with smoke, and there's giant presents all around her, and they all have giant dolls in them, which are you know dancers that are dressed like dolls. But first of all, they move like the chick from the ring, and secondly, <laughs> everything about them is goddamn terrifying. Like the the imagery, the the doll heads they gave them, and everything. Everything about it is nightmare shit. Yeah. yeah. Someone who was costuming these dancers was like, hey, sorry, I've never seen a doll before. They're basically scarecrows, but scarier, right? Oh, yeah. No, that's yeah. what they are. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. These costumes will be great then. Yeah. I was impressed that this little actor was able to not be terrified on on stage, right? Well, they all acted like this little actor wasn't even on set. Like, she <laughs> kept getting whipped in yes! the face by their clothes <laughs> and nearly trampled by all these yes. hipster prairie dress like the most terrifying Coachella I've ever seen in my life well and on top of that because they've got like fog on the on the floor the entire time but of course once you start dancing you kick up the fog so the little girl just completely disappears in the fog over and over again <laughs> you're so worried about her because they're kicking around and you're like you guys really haven't been paying attention even when she was visible <laughs> so, yeah, yes. and to be clear this is 1959 fog so that was just cigarette smoke they just blew a bunch <laughs> yeah. of cigarette smoke in that little girl's face yeah yeah so yeah so uh, they dance around for I don't know 23 minutes yeah <laughs> far too long 12 trim hours trim the fat trim the fat <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> uh, but then once they're once they're done they, they try to convince Lupita that she needs to steal dolls oh my god oh my god the face oh <laughs> so terrifying oh so it is truly a sewn shut bag with two giant buttons for eyes. This was a yes. movie that was sold as a Christmas film for children. If I, you uh, were unlucky in 1959, your parents would be like, hey, they're showing a special matinee down at the thing, kiddo. Enjoy that movie. And then it was a doll with a sewn shut mouth being like, you should steal Satan commands you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying I have more sympathy for the boomers than I ever have. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No wonder they screwed us all because yeah. they had to stare at this resting, horrifying doll face. Yeah, exactly. right, right. They took a look at this movie and they're like, you know, what we need is a fucking hole in the ozone layer, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to get more judges. This is getting out of hand. But there's also this great moment where, like, um. The dolls are like, Lupita, you should steal a doll. And she says, no, I don't want to be bad. And they're like, but dollies like bad girls. We don't like cowards that are afraid to steal. And I'm like, I got in so much trouble from this argument when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't terror dolls making that uh, making the argument that time. But anyway, OK, so but she wakes up, she thwarts the devil. She's too good for him. And then now we're back in Cloud Castle where Santa's threatening to kick Satan in the balls if he ever gets a shot That's at him. the best. Watching Santa smack talk from his space castle, it's this scene. I'll curb stomp that red motherfucker. <laughs> Mark my words! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Pedro thinks that it's time that they check in on the three boys that threw those rocks at Robot Santa. And I just want to say, their evil has clicked up several notches from the beginning of this movie. 
Yeah. We check on them and they're like, let's kill our parents and overthrow the government. <laughs> <laughs> but before we can check in on them, we have to go through the zooming in the telescope thing again. <laughs> yeah, again. Again. Yep. Again. <laughs> Because those flesh lips were promised their screen time. I don't want to say what they did to earn it, but those flesh lips were promised their screen time. You know what they did. So, all right. So, yeah. So the three bad kids, uh, we check in on them. They're hiding under their bed, plotting quietly. They're like, let's break a window and steal a toy. It's fun to be bad. Santa doesn't care about us. <laughs> and then they start shit talking Santa, right? They're like, you know, the thing about Santa is he's fat and he's old and he's lazy and he's a bitch. And then we cut to Santa going like, man, God damn, I'm trim. I'm tr- yeah, we I'm get trim. we get Santa being like, Santa's gonna start working out again. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I just got ring fit. I have ring yeah. fit now. <laughs> Chinese kid, get me to the gym. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at this 19-year-old Santa is dating, huh? huh? <laughs> we should all get dinner sometime. I'm five. <laughs> <laughs> and, Santa, <laughs> and Santa actually points out that he's young compared to biblical creation. I'm like, yeah, you're not, you're not selling it. Uh, and then he gets on the mic. And tells those kids to go fuck themselves. <laughs> and, and the kids are like, wait, did did Tama just tell us to fuck ourselves? <laughs> we were talking shit about Santa, and then we very clearly heard Santa's voice tell us to fuck ourselves. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. I think Santa needs a minute to take some deep breaths. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But when we come back, this movie will still be on. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> All right, guys, gather around. Today, we take the first steps to make Mexico's greatest Christmas movie. Yay! Hooray! So, what have you got for me? Well, I rode the It's a Small World After All ride at Disneyland twice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I looked at the front of many Christmas picture books. All right. Mm-hmm. And I uh, just want to be clear, you guys think you can cobble together a classic Christmas film from riding a children's ride and looking at the front of children's books. Um, yes. Also, yes. Okay, let's do it. This is going to be great. And we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to open up this time on that rich kid writing a letter to Santa about how all he really wants is for his parents to love him. (laughs) So sad. So dark. Also, it transitions into just general kids writing letters to yeah. Santa, which was very confusing because he goes, all I want for Christmas is not to be alone. And I want a little brother <laughs> <laughs> who's my age. And I didn't realize that that was a different kid writing. So I was like, wow, that's a that's quite a fucking ass to ask for a yeah. brother your age. <laughs> But yeah, we get this letter writing montage, this montage of a bunch of kids writing letters to Santa. And I love this one. Like we get the little orphan kid writing. All I want for Christmas is a papa and maybe even a mama. And then we cut immediately to this rich business kid who's sitting <laughs> in this business office desk or whatever. Little Chad, I want a train and a horse and I want all the <laughs> train tracks in the country. Yeah, I wrote I wrote in my notes. Wait, what did that other kid ask for? Well, now I feel like an asshole. I didn't realize it was, <laughs> we were doing comparative fucking letters here. <laughs> Do both. <laughs> and watching these little kids write and fake write these yes. letters yes. is so funny. <laughs> like squiggle, 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 squiggle. <laughs> like they're writing a manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the like village people variations that we get from kid to kid, right? It's like <laughs> yes. we're moving our way up the class ladder or something. Yes. All right, so now we we head to the post office where they're sorting the letters to Santa, and one guy's job... Santa, Santa, <laughs> is Santa. ...is to pick up his letter to Santa and go, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus. like, just use your inside voice, man. <laughs> Santa, Santa, Mama, Mama, Santa, St. Nick, Santa. <laughs> and once again, we watch him do this for four and a half minutes because they won't trim the fucking fat. <laughs> trim the fat. <laughs> so, 
But I did love. Okay, so this was kind of cute. They the way the post office takes care of it when they get a bunch of letters for Santa is they dump them in the chimney <laughs> and then they fly up through the chimney and out into the cloud castle <laughs> and all over Santa's face and chest in a way that can only be described as erotic. Oh, money shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. You get it. I yeah, get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Put those letters all over my face. <laughs> yeah. He just stands there reveling in it and all its bukkake glory <laughs> as it pours down upon him. Yeah. No, there's only one way to interpret this. It's like the lips in the walls, guys. Yes. Yes. <laughs> all right. So now Santa starts reading the letters I wrote in my notes. He reads. Santa reads on the show. <laughs> uh, but he does. And. For the second time in, what, a month and a half, we have a kid who wants an atomic laboratory? What the fuck is going on in the universe? <laughs> okay, to be fair, that was Vladimir Putin's letter as a child. Oh, I think it's okay. cool, yeah. the future president. Of <laughs> That's so funny. I wrote Kim Jong-un. <laughs> well, yeah, right, right. And I love, we get Santa, like, seeing right through the bad liar kids. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. Santa is a judgy bitch. <laughs> yeah, me, though. Absolutely. <laughs> There's also the one where he reads, opens the letter, and it's like, Dear Santa, please bring me a little brother. I just wanted, like, the porn music to kick in or whatever. <laughs> so it's like, gotcha, yeah. buddy. That's yeah. why Santa has his sleeping dust. We'll, we'll get to it later <laughs> in the movie. Don't worry. <laughs> all right, so now we get the scene where Santa heads down to the factory floor to tell all the workers that he's turned the org chart upside down to emphasize that the workers are the top of the company. And then he fucking leaves two seconds later. He's yep. that boss. Yeah, I wrote, oh, my God, Santa's every boss at Christmas who pretends you're on a team or some shit. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> right. Never could do it without you. So you do all the work. Yeah. I couldn't do it. So I'm unfireable. You. No, I didn't think so, Santa. Yeah. <laughs> We're all a family. Now get back to work, motherfuckers. <laughs> and I'll be laying off half of you after this season. So. Yeah, right, right. Like a family. <laughs> <laughs> and then, by the way, okay, so if you're ever showing this to a friend who's never seen it, stop right there and bet them a billion dollars to a donut that they don't know which character we're about to introduce, right? <laughs> you will get a donut every fucking time because now it's time for us to meet Merlin the Wizard. Merlin the Wizard, everybody. Get oh, ready. Ridiculous. Who is apparently, I don't know, Santa's Q in this universe, <laughs> right? He's like, here's a pack yeah. of gum that explodes if you chew it. And oh, by the way, here's some the sleeping powder for the children you asked me for. Over yeah. and over again. Yeah. And here's a tiny umbrella gun. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Right. But but he's Q with dementia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's like, Merlin, what do you have for me this Christmas? Are you my daughter? N nope, <laughs> Merlin. Um, <laughs> do you have a... Also, so what he does give him, I just want to point this out, is sleeping powder and a flower that turns you invisible and blah, blah, blah. However, the ingredients for that are, according to Merlin, uranium and plutonium. <laughs> Those are among the ingredients in the sleeping powder, yes. Yeah. So I wrote in my notes, man, me and Merlin have very different definitions of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Merlin goes to this giant flowers to mix Santa's child roofies together. And by the way, this actor showed up on stage, put a gun to his own fucking head and said, there will be 11 minutes of my silly walk in this movie. <laughs> right? And I will do my own underscoring. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'll have a wacky soundtrack. We can't afford a wacky soundtrack. I will have a wacky soundtrack! <laughs> And this is like, it's the best wizard in an improv scene I've ever seen. <laughs> He's so like, well, I'm a crazy wizard. It's like the most overacted, horrible oh, bit. He, he keeps doing this bit where he'll get all the way to the flowers and he'll realize he forgot his urn. So he'll silly walk back and come. There's never a reason he just does it over and over again. I so appreciated this guy because it's like, you know, nobody's reacted, but he's just going with it. <laughs> he's yep. going to make it work. <laughs> It's like watching Eli bomb. 
I was All just right. going to say, it's like me bombing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke that doesn't land at a live show, The Wizard. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Tripling down. So, so Santa gets his his invisibility flower and his roofie powder, and then Santa has to go see his private blacksmith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good old pube chest. <laughs> yep. oh, God. There is a backstory there that I am missing and really, really want because he's like, "Here, Santa, here's your key that opens every door." Please let me be free. No. <laughs> Can I have a shirt? Yeah, I work right. around fire. My chest hair is kind of gross and all like asymmetrical and curly. I mean, at the very least, I should have a shirt. Yeah. Oh, the blacksmith is played by the Geico caveman. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but now, okay, so he gives him the golden key that will open all the doors. And now it's time for Santa to work out. And he's got one of those... <laughs> The jiggly band things, which yeah. must, that must have been like the shake weight of the 1950s, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was that based on? Like, why did people think that worked? We see it in old movies all the time and everyone's always just like, oh, remember that? But no one's ever been like, yeah, until 1962, we thought you could just shake the fat off your body. Sorry, our bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was, if I couldn't point to even dumber shit people are buying as exercise equipment now, that would That's be really fair. hard yeah. to explain. But yeah, yeah, we have people who shove bleach up their asses. Okay, so <laughs> That's true. That, yeah, that's fair. Point taken. All right. Yeah. So Santa, you know, does his little shake weight thing, and then he practices his chimney squats, and then the narrator comes in. Like Santa's body coach going, see, Santa's not as fat as you thought. He's looking pretty good. Uh, I bet you thought we wouldn't follow up on that Santa body shaming segment from earlier in the movie. <laughs> well, you were fucking wrong. Now you're going to watch Santa drink a protein shake, even though he <laughs> feels weirdly full and sick. So, All right. Now, now it's time to check out Santa's sleigh and his canonical bionic reindeer. Oh. <laughs> So terrifying. Yeah. Okay, first of all, Santa's sleigh is so very clearly a converted golf cart, and that makes me sad. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> very sad. <laughs> I also, like, honestly, I, I thought the robot reindeer was kind of a cool touch. I noticed they could only afford four of them. I get it. I get yep. it. Also, Russian kid comes over and tells him to turn his reindeer into Sputniks. <laughs> yeah, right. And they have a weird little argument about whether or not reindeer are the ideal spacecraft. And Santa's like, I'm done having this argument with you, Dimitri. Just fucking drop it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we learn the stakes of the movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Yes. So the stakes of the movie is if Santa's not back, children's movie, if Santa's <laughs> not back by morning... His reindeer will turn to dust and he will starve to death because in space, he eats clouds. Yep. And down on Earth, humans eat smoke. Yes. <laughs> Look, I get the first part. The people who made this movie know that humans don't eat smoke. <laughs> so, well, they, they, little Pedro, he asks uh, Sandy, he's like, what do humans eat down on Earth? And he goes, humans eat most of the animals and plants on the Earth. I'm like, no, you're doing no. it wrong, man. Mm -mm. That was a fucking cactus. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so now his international child slave delegation sings him <laughs> off and loads his bag up. With frowns on their face. Yep, yeah, none of them having a good time with this. Yeah, and I'm just imagining that they're all like, oh, have fun, Santa, bye. Quick, we have to get out before he gets yeah, back. Yeah, right, yeah. right, yeah, exactly. Start stringing together bed sheets. This is a long way down. Exactly. <laughs> they all take down their Farrah Fawcett posters. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right, so yeah, so he gets all his toys. They have this weird singing bit where Santa's not even trying to fucking rhyme. <laughs> And then he has to wind up his reindeer. Uh huh. He's got the big key that he has to stick in him and wind him. And, and until then, the reindeer were not also creepy as fuck. Yes, but they they come to life when he winds them. Oh yeah. no, they laugh like him. Yes, <laughs> they do. <laughs> Everything in this movie is unnecessarily terrifying. Yeah. So Santa's off. 
we have this bit where he's like, oh, Santa almost hit the moon. But don't worry, because, you know, the moon, that's in space. Right. Santa, Santa's drinking and slaying again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the family doesn't talk about it, but, you know. Yeah, DWS. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone does. <laughs> All right, so then we cut to uh, Satan on a rooftop rethinking his life. I just <laughs> just blew somebody behind a dumpster. I don't know what's supposed to be happening here, but Satan does not look to be having a good time. Yeah, he's having the crack shakes <laughs> <Yeah>. up there. <laughs> yeah. I wrote, Satan is in Chicago shooting up on a rooftop. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then we, we, we cut over to the rich kid's parents going like, all right, it's Christmas Eve. We're off to not be around you. <laughs> Have fun sleeping with that toy rifle you're apparently holding. <laughs> Why do you keep putting that into your mouth and saying, I want to go like Walt Whitman? Cut it out, kid. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then, okay, we cut over Hemingway. to the room. Hemingway. Hemingway's the one, not with Yeah, Thank right. You. No, I was wondering where you were going with that. But, okay, so the, the, we cut over to the three bad kids. They're on the, the rooftop that the devil's on, planning to mug Santa. Man, baby El Chapo is hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we see Lupita. She's going to bed, and she's not so sure about this Santa dude. She thinks he's kind of a dick for not bringing her good stuff like he brings for the rich kids, right? She's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and she's she's really backing mom into a corner here because she's like, Mama, if Santa brings me a second doll, I will let the baby Jesus have my second doll. And she's like, all right, let's not get crazy with the second doll <laughs> talk. Or even really the first doll talk. I don't know if you saw, but you're dead. Tried to give you a jacket for Christmas earlier and it didn't really take. So, <laughs> but then he took it back because he had to go outside. Yeah. But, and and her mom's advice to her here is to like really pray, you know, really, really pray. Don't half ass it, Lupita, which is terrifying when you consider that she's the mom and knows her child isn't getting a doll. Right, because yeah. yeah, she's clearly setting up for the well, you must have half assed that prayer, Lupita. <laughs> Excuse later, yeah. And then she like compares their poorness to Jesus yep. and like, oh, no, I mean, Jesus was poor. So we're we're doing good. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're not as poor as Christ was. <laughs> yeah, you were born in a living room. That's way better. huh? Right. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, Santa's dropping in on Mexico City and the devil is going to Push the chimney out of the way so that Santa can't get it. We're going to wily coyote this shit from here on out. <laughs> and, and listeners, we will never communicate to you how slow and trudging these comedy bits are. Oh. If you watch, watch a wily coyote cartoon on one fourth speed on YouTube yeah. and you've captured <laughs> the essence of this. Yeah. We watch, we watch Satan stretch. We watch him limber up. We, yes. He picks a side of the chimney. He pushes it. And then Santa goes through the door. Yeah, say it with me, listeners. Trip, Trip the, the fat. fat. <laughs> oh, speaking of the fat, okay, so the guy that they've got playing Santa, he's, you know, an older and heavy dude because he's playing Santa. But that means that, like, if they need him to climb down a rope ladder, we're in for seven minutes of this guy getting onto a rope ladder. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will never communicate the speed at which and the frequency at which we watch this man gingerly climb down a ladder because he fell in a cut we'll never see <laughs> right right so yeah but yeah the, the the chimney's no good so he takes out his tiny little parasol and he jumps down and he goes in through the door but then, while he's in the house, some kids hear him in the living room. Don't worry, though. He has magic sleeping plutonium. So he <laughs> Chernobyls those kids out of his way. <laughs> also being super loud. Like, yeah. Yeah. rattling all the doors. Like, talking out loud to himself. Like. <laughs> yeah, no, he was looking for an excuse to use that roofy powder. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And then there's this wacky little bit where the devil pushes the chimney back into place and Santa blows soot all over his face. <laughs> Great. Uh, 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 uh. All right. So 
Now we're at another house. Uh, this, the devil is doing interpretive dance as he awaits Santa. Yes! Because, <laughs> again, this is this, like, famous clown doing his bits, right? Right. Yeah. But no one who made the English version of the movie gets it, so it's just like, there's the devil again being... Yeah. Weird, fuck, fuck put it out. <laughs> Acted all gay, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, but okay. So Satan's plan this time is he's going to light a fire in the chimney so Santa can't get down through there. And then he's going to make the door handle really, really hot a la Kevin McAllister. Keep so that the change, you filthy <laughs> yeah, devil. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, a lot of Home Alone is stolen from the 1959 movie Santa Claus. I'll give yes. you all it. Macaulay Satan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, of course, Santa sees what the devil's doing, and he comes in through a window instead. Well, not before he burns his butt and pats it a uh, lot. Eight, <laughs> 11 minutes you ever been in a public restroom with another dude and you're done peeing and you're shaking and he's shaking and then you realize he's jerking off? That's the butt padding that Santa does in right. this scene. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, Rebecca can absolutely relate. Someone listening will get that. And someone listening knows what I'm going through. Someone's used a public restroom with me. <laughs> Statistically speaking. We go to a lot of good what I was doing. Yeah, you, Eli, you should stop jerking off next to people in public bathrooms. Yeah, I, do, I told yeah, Noah, you, and I'll, I'll tell, tell you, you what. You know what? No. Tell him one time and see if that works. Tell him one time, see how that does. Yeah. So, uh, all I'm saying is you're a little late to this party, Rebecca. <laughs> all right. So yeah, and by the way, so we get Santa sneaking around behind the devil. He has a flower that turns him invisible. He forgets that a lot. Yes. But this this is also where he finds the toy cannon that he can use to shoot the devil in the ass. Mm -hmm. Which means that among the toys that he was going to give to a child was a cannon with which you could shoot a dart into someone's ass. Ah, 1959. When all the toys were meant to kill you. Yeah, Not just good. Right. None of this 1970s pussy bullshit, oh no, it accidentally makes sparks. It was a flamethrower. <laughs> It was the golden generation gearing up for World War III, yeah. damn it. <laughs> Gas-powered sharp thing here. This is when yeah. kids played like men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My first artillery piece, yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what. This is the first Christian movie we've watched that's actually gone all the way to anal penetration, so we're going to pause to celebrate. <laughs> uh, but first, let me get back through the hard sell here. Will Mexican Santa get detained when he tries to enter the U.S.? Will Short Round and Indy show up to lead Santa's helpers to freedom? Will Santa and the devil cut the sexual tension and fuck already? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the harrowing conclusion of Santa Claus. My minions, gather round and hear my orders. Yes, the Lord Satan. Each of you has been given an evil to do this Christmas. Do not fail me. We won't. Balthazar. You shall make that weird, deep puddle thing next to a curb. You know, it looks like snow, so you step on it, but then you end up ankle-deep in water. Ho, 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 that's the worst. <laughs> exactly, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, uh, and Lilith, Lilith, you're going to make the women of the world get a little too drunk at the Christmas party and kind of flirt with people they aren't interested in. Oh, and then, like, he'll try to make it... Be a thing when it's not a thing? Exactly, he'll try and make it be a thing when and, it's not a thing. And me, Satan? Oh! Pitch. Right. <laughs> of course I have something for you. I'll tell you what. Why don't you... Prank Santa Claus? Prank Santa Claus? Yep, that is what I said. You can fuck up his sleigh, make little girls steal that stuff. You'll, Is you'll that, figure it out. I... Okay. What? No, I, I just... It seems a little like you thought those guys stuff through really well, and I mine seems kind of added on. Just like... What? No! Yeah, I... No, I, I had always planned this. You, um... Also, also, you can murder Santa if you get the chance. Again? Mm-hmm. Yeah, with a murder prank, if you... A, a, a murder prank? Yes. 
Yeah, whatever. Okay, Pitch, don't do this. No, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. He's mad. He's he totally mad. I'm not mad. Just upset. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. And once again, we're going to open up on that poor little rich kid whose parents fucking hate him. <laughs> he wanders downstairs to see if there's any love there. There's not. By there's the way, he, he was told by his parents, if you get lonely while we're gone, just go downstairs and practice those fucking piano lessons we've been paying for. <laughs> and look, I'm not unsympathetic to this kid. I'm just saying there were maybe other kids who had it worse in Mexico City in 1959. It's a weird focus. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So we watch him play the piano. We watch him sit in the front of the fire. Movie gold. You can't, you can't lose any of this. And then we watch him sit in front of the fire long enough to fall asleep. Yeah, in real time. Yes, yes. <laughs> and okay, so once he's asleep, Santa shows up. Santa starts by blowing him a kiss. That's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then he, he puts some toys down by the, some unwrapped toys down by the tree and everything. And then he leans in real close like he's going for the kiss. And then he says, I'm going to let you see me in a way that I very rarely let anyone see me <laughs> oh okay now let's let's just be clear that if they had just at this point in the movie if they had reenacted the stripper scene from her <laughs> this is our favorite movie <laughs> <laughs> but now okay but now he uses uh, santa's powders are so unnecessarily convoluted <laughs> he uses a powder that makes the kid dream that he's woken up <laughs> you'll dream of not dreaming double you'd wake up but not in your dream god damn it merlin this is so <laughs> damn complicated <laughs> yeah yeah exactly leonardo dicaprio shows up and goes no 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 man this is way too much way too much <laughs> and then if santa has this great line so the kid wakes up and he says santa santa say you love me i want someone to love me anyone and then santa says and i quote i love you just as much as your parents because nobody loves a child as much as their parents is the line. And <laughs> hope to God that's not true. <laughs> yeah, right. I wanted Santa to like brush him off. Like, I love you, Santa. Do you love me? And I wanted Santa to be like, wow. Um, you know, I feel like we're having a great time and I don't, oh, it's just, there's a lot. Uh, the thing about the, my last relationship ended really badly with the little boy. <laughs> He's a slave in my ice castle in the sky now. I don't want to get into it. His name yeah, is Pedro. And I kind of got these lips on a wall. It's a whole thing. We <laughs> got these wall lips and we don't like labels, but. <laughs> All right. And then, okay, so then we go and we check in on rich kids' parents at their Christmas Eve fuck the kids am I right party <laughs> I think that's super in line with 1959 yeah, prob yeah, actually, yeah probably and then so they're at this restaurant we see somebody come by and go like here drink this smoking beverage you didn't order Ugh, Brooklyn cocktails oh, yeah. really? I was gonna say I, credit where credit's due both Rebecca and I are like oh I hate it when servers push the mixed drink <laughs> <laughs> And boy, he pushes it hard, right? This is like that scene in Jackie Brown where Samuel Jackson has to talk Chris Tucker into the fucking trunk, right? He's like, here, <laughs> drink this cocktail. They're like, we don't, that's smoking. It doesn't look like a beverage. It looks like dry ice in there. Is that dry ice? And you he goes, only no. people who love yeah. can drink this drink. What? <laughs> Never take anything from anyone who tells you anything like that. Yeah. What about people without love? Oh, for them, this is just steaming bleach. <laughs> 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 but for you, it's a delicious cocktail. Yeah, so, drop me a link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually they decide to drink the cocktail. Because basically, like, the waiter's just like, what, are you, you you too scared to drink it? You don't think you have real love? Are you guys not in love? Why don't you want to yeah. drink my beverage? And the dad's like, I'll drink that fucking beverage. I'll drink it. Drink it with my mouth. So he drinks the thing. And then the waiter disappears. And mom's like, I don't think that was a waiter at all. I think that was Santa Claus. Oh, my God. And he's like, wow, that must have hit you fucking hard. Let's get you home. 
<laughs> and they're both like, well, that's strange. I suddenly have the urge to interact with our offspring. Let's go home. Because <laughs> it's Christmas fucking Eve. And then we see the most awkward family embrace. <laughs> Thank you. Seen. They're just rubbing their faces against one another <laughs> while yeah. facing out towards the camera. It's very odd. Yeah. Yeah, boy, well, you take away the camera and that's an even weirder <laughs> embrace. Yeah. Yes, I have never rubbed my face against my mother and father's face at the same time. No, I haven't. <laughs> Apparently my parents didn't love me either, I guess. Yeah. All right. Hear me out, Mom and Dad. I want to motorboat your faces. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, the bad kids are still planning to mug Santa. And I love this bit where the one kid's like, hey, I just had a great idea that suddenly makes us carrying all this rope up here make sense. We'll use it as a trip line, right? And they test it. Yeah. They go like, wait, wait, wait. Yep, it's a rope. It is a <laughs> rope. <laughs> and we watch them test it. And then Santa, all right, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I'm willing to be wrong on this. Fires a warning rocket at them. Absolutely yes. shoots a surface to air missile at them. Well, yes. air to surface, but yes, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, okay. So, yeah, they th he explodes. He fires a fucking flare off him. And then they're like, oh, I'm blinded. I'm blinded. And they all, like, stumble off the rooftop that they're on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Today we learn that Santa is a Israeli. So that's a fun little <laughs> fact. <laughs> <laughs> but then I love, too, because, like, Satan's there and he's been manipulating these kids all along. And so now they're turning on each other. Yeah, <laughs> and then they start fighting, and this and and the devil's like, mm -hmm, "Mission accomplished." Got three six year old boys to fight each other. I am the devil. <laughs> Just imagine him coming downstairs and bragging to Satan about that. I got children to fight. What do you mean they do that anyway? This is the fucking worst. You know, to stay in hell. I'm gonna go visit my parents. They were gonna mug Santa, but he fired a missile. I didn't think he was going to fire me. I did not know he had missiles in that thing. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we haven't seen this enough. Now it's time to watch fucking Santa climb down another chimney. Yeah. My notes for this scene are, hey, Tim, before we cast you in our movie, you can climb a ladder, right? <laughs> oh, me? Oh. Yeah. Totally. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Totes. Totes my goats. Yeah. <laughs> A ladder is uh, stairs, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, right, right. Those you use your hands, your hands. I knew that. I knew that. Yeah, so so he goes down the chimney. Satan climbs up his sleigh. He's going to steal it. But unfortunately, the reindeer are voice activated, I guess. So he can't yeah. do that. Or their union. It was unclear. He was just like, ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, I can't get the... Nah. Sorry, we only answer to the laughter of a serial killer. I'm yeah, sorry. Right, right, right. This movie was in real danger of having stakes for a second there, but don't worry. <laughs> well, yeah, and it almost does again because, right, like, so he looks down and he realizes that Santa's coming up that rope ladder fast. So he pulls out a pair of scissors to cut not the rope ladder. <laughs> Instead, he sneaks around the side and he cuts open the bag that Santa keeps his sleeping roofies in. Which, yes. again, I keep siding with this little bit. Pitch. Yeah, right, right, yes. yes. <laughs> because he's like, I'll take away these drugs you keep spraying on children. <laughs> yes. which, which you have admitted contain uranium and plutonium. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll take away your child paraquat here. Yeah, so. But yeah, so now. We get Santa going to yet another house thinking he still has his powder and his magic flower, but he doesn't. So when he walks by a dog, he's like, ha, shakes his dick at the dog. You can't get me. I have an invisibility flower. Fuck you. Fuck you, dog. <laughs> and then he starts walking away and the, Satan's like, ha ha, and unleashes the dog, right? Yeah. And I'm like, if this movie goes full Cujo from here, if we cut to like four days later and Santa's in that tree starving to death, I would love this. But no, it doesn't quite. No. Yeah, but but the but the dog does tree Santa. Yep. Which was step two of of Satan's plan. Step three is to go whisper to all the sleeping adults that they should shoot any fat men that they find in trees in their yard. 
right? <laughs> okay. So Again, weird. <laughs> little more behind the scenes here. Okay, so the father in this movie was the star of like a very famous 1959 like family comedy, except no one else in the family comedy agreed to be in this movie. So imagine if Archie Bunker was in a movie <laughs> from the United States doing Archie Bunker. But no one else from the cast was in the movie. So it was just Archie Bunker married to alternate universe family. That's what we're getting at this point in the film. Oh, my God. That makes this scene make so much more sense, though, because this is characters that we've never met. And we spend so much time with them doing shtick about who's going to go. Like, yeah, we're, we're there with them for like 10, 15 minutes of this movie now. Yes. And what does he whisper to the wife? Is there... Any behind the scenes about that? (laughs) There is not, sadly. Oh, my God. Because every other thing is dubbed over. And then Mm -hmm. when he whispers to the wife, there's no dubbing. It's just (laughs) like the actor was like, hey, do you want to get out of here? (laughs) (laughs) You remind me of a pair of lips I have at home. (laughs) We'll talk later. We'll talk later. All right. So, yeah. So Santa is up the tree. He's screaming for Merlin's help, but Merlin's nowhere to be found. Nobody's in the observatory with the giant lips. So and and dad inside the dad inside wakes up and gets his bedside pistol. And he's like, "Mm, I would love to go kill Santa. I have bone spurs. Would anyone else? I can't murder. I have a cough. Yeah, right, right. (laughs) And then Santa or Satan, rather, I'm sorry, I have Santa and Satan in my notes so much that I've inter- intermixed them a couple times. Satan also makes someone call the police in their sleep. Yes. Yeah, he has them call the fire department as well. That, that too. Yeah. Which is made doubly weird by the fact that the fire department does not believe the phone call until the fu- the phone shoots fire. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a real fire then. I'm going to need some proof that you need the fire service, okay? It's Christmas. (laughs) And by the way, also at this point, Satan takes a break from all of this Santa trapping and goes to tell Lupita that Santa's not going to bring her any toys because she's poor. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And again, mom is talking a huge game for a lady who we have not seen with a secret doll yet. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) No. (laughs) So she wakes up. Lupita wakes up. Mom, does Santa hate me because I'm poor? And the mom goes, honey, everyone hates you because you're poor. It's not just (laughs) Santa. You're yeah, you're pretty much fucked. Uh, Have you seen Roma? Yeah, And and you're a klepto, honey. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it's almost sunrise. Santa still hasn't come with her doll, so she's pretty much fucked. But then luckily, just then, Pedro happens by Santa's magic ear and hears his pleas for help. Right? That whole family is about to run outside to kill the prowler. The narrator is losing his patience all the fucking gather. <laughs> and, and I just want to say, I really wanted Pedro to be like Christmas party drunk, trying to find a corner to like make out with a secretary somewhere. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. He's not in his. Oh, oh shit. Fuck. I forgot the lips are in here. No, <laughs> we're, just, we're just looking for staples. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So the fire department's coming. The police are coming. The Red Cross is coming. And Satan's there to talk some shit to Santa, you know, before everything falls apart for him. But Pedro has run to get Merlin. Now, we have ourselves a good I don't know, six minutes or so of Pedro trying to talk Merlin into coming with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what's amazing is he's like, oh, Merlin, Merlin, you must come. Santa's in grave danger. And Merlin's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I do not want to run for no reason. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I have to do my own theme music. Have you heard from earlier in the music? I'm going to do a whole song. Don't want to do this for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, so Santa, he goes into the uh, to the office, the observatory or whatever, and Santa says, Merlin, help me. I've been, you know, trapped up a tree by a dog. So Merlin checks the telescope. We get to watch that bit again. To uh. what? Make sure Santa's not making this shit up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did theme music on the way here. I want to make sure you earn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Merlin thinks about it for a while, and he realizes that Santa just needs a cat because cats are the fucking best. (laughs) 
<laughs> so he's like, Santa, use your one of your wind up cats from your bag to distract the dog. Mm -hmm. Huh? And I should point out that Merlin Jeff Goldblum's his way to the magic cat. Yeah. In a way that makes even less sense. He's like, dog, dog, beast, beast, yeast, <laughs> bread, fed, dead, unlucky, death, black cat, cat, cat. Yeah, you need a robot cat. Get a robot cat. Right. That's, yeah. To get from dog to you should use a cat. Yeah, exactly. He has a nine step thing. Yeah. Oh, I was really hoping that this was going to end in a glorious shootout with the police. Santa just pulls a machine gun out of his. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Just ends on a Butch Cassidy in the Sunday. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. yeah. He just charges <laughs> out. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. But he gets away just in the St. Nick of time and the fire hey. department. Yeah, thank you. The fire <laughs> department puts out the devil because he's smoking because there's some smoke over there where the devil was. Yeah. And the, na the narrator's like, he's sure to get pneumonia from that. And, you know, pneumonia kills you. It's 1959, so that's, yeah. a, <laughs> right. that's a much more yeah. serious stakes we just established. Yeah, but in keeping with the movie, a very slow, unnecessarily yes. long. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Well, watch. Well, now he has pleurisy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. And OK, then we check back in the the flower that turns you invisible had fallen and we were like, oh, well, I wonder who's going to get that. The narrator was. We weren't. But the narrator's like, wow, I wonder who's going to find that later. We check yeah. back in on it. It has fallen right into Lapita's house. This will never come back. Nope. No. No one will find it or anything. No. Nope. Mm -mm. All right. So Lupita's <laughs> mom is dreaming of lightning and horror. Uh, and then there's a knock at the door, and I'm like, wow, Santa's not even fucking trying at this point, is he? Hey, uh, here, take a fucking doll. I gotta go or I'll starve to death. Bye. Yeah, right. <laughs> but even worse, even worse, it's dad. Dad comes home, and the mom's like, have you found any work? And he's like, no, you know, now that I think about it, going out pre-dawn on Christmas morning was probably not the best time. I don't know. I thought maybe someone would be hiring a Santa Claus. Ah, stupid, stupid. <laughs> Let me try and give the kid my jacket again. <laughs> Damn it, she has a blanket. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, so then, okay, Lupita wakes up to tell mom about the whole movie right she's like no don't worry santa left me a great doll on the patio and mom's like okay no i can work with this we'll say the neighbors <laughs> took it when yeah. i can work with this yeah but sure enough she goes out on the patio and there's a doll even bigger than her it's the biggest doll. i wanted mom to snatch it away you know that's not your doll that's so daddy doesn't kill again <laughs> 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 And then mom, I love this, crosses herself. Catholicism is weird. <laughs> yes. Thanks yes. for the child sized doll. Santa? I'm a Catholic. It's fine. It's fine. It's it's good. Good. So I'll forehead, chest, shoulder, <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> when in doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So then Touch I guess everybody has a very Merry Christmas. But the ending message of this is so goddamn weird, right? So instead of it just coming up and saying Merry Christmas, it comes up and it says, blessed are those that believe for they shall see God. <laughs> like a weird little fuck you to us right at the end. Wow. The fool in his heart says in his heart, there is no yeah, God. Right. Merry Christmas, everybody. The end. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, so they all lived happily ever after, I guess, or the acid started to wear off or something because it's over now. So I have to ask, though, because it's not like Christmas movies are usually good. Where does this rank in terms of the Christmas movies that you've seen? Uh, just above Fred Claus, just below the Santa Claus six. Okay, all right. <laughs> it, are there six? I don't know. Probably oh. at this point. <laughs> I was yes. like outraged. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Tim Allen's still working? Uh, Fuck exactly, that. Fuck exactly. that. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't know. I I think I ha this has to be the worst one I've ever seen. Honestly. Ooh, yeah. Really? Worse than Die Hard 3? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm I kidding. That one wasn't I, I, a crisp. That one wasn't a crisp. The first two were Christmas movies. The third. And I will admit, I have not seen any of the Die Hards. What? Oh. I know. I know. I'm just. I'm gonna get shit for this on Twitter. I know it. Right. I know. I know. And we're totally gonna have you back on for Die Hard three <laughs> at some point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. 
All right. Well, Rebecca, I cannot thank you enough for hanging out with us. It's been a blast. Always a blast to have you on. And uh, just one more time, if our listeners wanted to hear more from you, uh, where should they go? We can go on my Instagram at who is Rebecca Vigil. I'm unfortunately on there. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. All right. So, of course, we'll have that linked on the show notes as well. And that is going to do it for our review of Santa Claus. That is not going to do it for the episode just yet, though, because we still need to pop out again next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Santa with muscles. It's the Hulk Hogan Christmas movie, oh, everybody. Fuck you. <laughs> it's just oh, fuck you. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to, I guess we're going to bring episode 225 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Rebecca Vigil for suffering alongside us this week, and perhaps an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us done by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Need, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used for permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Pedro went on to lead a bloody slave uprising in the Cloud Castle and was murdered at the age of nine. The three naughty boys burned in hell forever. Dana was finally arrested after years of trapping children from all over the world in his space castle and was sent to federal prison. Days later, he was found dead in his cell. (laughs) Hashtag Santa didn't kill himself. (laughs) The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.